This is Prince Dax. This is the Royal Financial Investment Group uh, coming to you live here from Texas. I know it's been a while since I made a new episode, but you know, I've been busy on the road a little bit, but uh, I definitely will not neglect you guys and coming back with a new episode for the YouTube channel. If you haven't, if this is your first episode you've seen, go back and check out my YouTube channel. It's a lot of great tutorials, uh, how to start trading stock, water stocks, all the other good stuff, investments. Um, and it's a lot of other episodes where I talk about interesting topics. So today's topic is going to be how finances will eliminate 90% of majority of people's stresses. So how finances will eliminate 90% of the things that stress people. So I know before we jump into this, it's nothing absolute. Not everybody problem boils down to money, you know, all that other stuff. It's nothing absolute. It's nothing 100%. But for majority of people, 90% of their stresses or 95% of their stresses come boils down to finances. So that's going to be the topic of the day, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So I will, uh, before I jump into that, as always, uh, thank you guys for uh, liking the Facebook page and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't been to my Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash Royal Financial Group. Again, that's Facebook.com, Royal Financial Group. Go to the page, like the page. A lot of good information we put up there uh, daily. And check that out. Also, um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button. Like, share, comment, all of the good stuff. If you find what I'm saying is of good value. Leave a comment. Let me know if it's good. Give me a thumbs down. You guys have been pretty great about that. And um, I want to thank you. If you got any questions you want to ask me, uh, email me at Prince, that is P-R-I-N-C-E, Prince, at RoyalFinancials.com. Prince, P-R-I-N-C-E, at RoyalFinancials.com. Or you can email me on my uh, Facebook page, or you can email me here on the YouTube channel. So now that we got all that stuff out of the way, let's get straight into the topic. So I know um, I'm from the South myself. I'm from Georgia, you know, coming below the Bible Belt, Christian raised, born and raised, Southern. Uh, where my mom, you know, my late mom, who just passed uh, a couple months ago in September, uh, she always taught me, she was like, you know, you know money's the root of all evil. That was in the Bible, you know, I don't know the verses and things like that, but, you know, money's the root of all evil. And you kind of was taught that people that had money or people that seek money were, were evil. You know, money was evil. It was, really, you know, it started a lot of bad things and it was pretty bad and you shouldn't want to seek money, which, uh, I agree with you shouldn't want to seek money and you shouldn't be greedy all that stuff like that because money is like anything else it's like a drug too much of anything is not good but you you got to look at the under you got to look at the underlying fact of what money does not what money is but what it does you know I don't like money itself and flashing money and taking pictures with money all that good stuff like that I get that but you can't deny the fact of the benefits that money brings. Money brings about the most important benefit money brings is choices, right? So for example, if you want to eat pizza right now, money will give you that ability to eat it right now. Or if you want to eat steak right now, money gives you that ability to eat steak right now. Or if you want to get up and go to the mall and buy yourself a new shirt, you can do that. Money gives you those choices. If you go to a restaurant and you don't like that restaurant because of bad service or because of bad quality of food, you can easily take your money and go to another restaurant because you have the choices that money brings. You have the money which brings choices, right? But if you didn't have that financial structure, that financial background, you wouldn't be able to jump and make those choices. Let's say if I lived in a neighborhood where I didn't have a car and I only had $10 and I wanted something to eat. So I walked to the nearest uh, restaurant. Let's say if it's a Popeye's chicken, for example, I get there. The service is horrible. The food is not that great, but it's the only thing that I can walk to in my close vicinity. What other choices that I have? I really don't have that many other choices because number one, I only have $10. There's so many, it, that cuts down my choices of restaurants to eat at since I only have $10. And also, since I don't have a car, like I said, I had to walk. Walking that also is gonna cut down on more choices. So now my choices are limited due to my finances with you know so money itself just by having low money it leaves low choices so now if you have the choices you can say hey well i don't want popeyes i want uh, uh mcdonald's or if i want 
whatever restaurant you can think of, you can get in your car and drive to there or you can have it delivered to you because, of, you know, those are the choices and the freedom that finances bring. Right. So that's one thing. So now how do I, you know, how do I equate that to most people's stresses? Right. What is the number one stressor that always people always boil down to when you ask them, hey, what's going on? The number one stressor that people always boil down to 95 percent of the time. Most people's stresses boil down to their job. Am I right? Am I correct? Right? Most people, you ask them, hey, you know what's going on? Oh, man, man, today, man, I'm going to tell you about it, man. You know, man, my supervisor said this. Or, man, this just doesn't make sense. I don't know why they're changing this. I don't know why they won't do it this way. Or they, they made up these new deadlines. Hey, this new thing just came out. They want me to do this or whatever. Or not getting along with coworkers. Oh, this person here is there. Oh, that person there is there. So the work environment is pretty, is, you know, brings on a lot of stress into most people's lives, right? But why are you working? But why are you going to this place every day if you hate it? And why are you letting this thing stress you out? The biggest thing, you're going to that place because that's how you make your money. That's how you make your living right hey if i don't go there i don't make money if i don't make money i can't pay the mortgage the lights the water car notes all the other good stuff so i have to continue to put myself in this stressful environment because of money now if i had the finances to where i didn't have to work there guess what that would alleviate so much stress right so i did so most people go to a job and that's what most people get their stress from but if they didn't have to have that job think about how much stress Will be relieved right another big stressor is some people don't like the neighborhood they live in you know i don't like the neighborhood i live in so you know if i had the finances and i had the, the means to i can move somewhere and buy two three acres of land where i don't have any neighbors right because of the freedom that finances are going to bring so that's another reason how finance would eliminate stress right when you have more resources you got if you haven't noticed this, you, you notice like uh man, my boss is on a low fuse or these CEOs have a low fuse. It's that the more money you the more money that you make, you know, your tolerating BS gets lower and lower and lower. You know, you're not gonna allow certain things to stress you, for example, right? Let's say for a prime example, let's say you're a kid and you you your mom, you get in the car with your mom. And your mom takes you to your friend's house that you can't stand, but you have no choice. You know, mom said, "Hey, get in the car." Mom puts you in the car. You know, now you know you just you're just sitting there, you waiting for your mom to leave. But let's say you become older. I'm giving you know a prime example. You become older now. You're a grown man, and your mom says, "Hey, I'm going to this person's house." You're like, you know what? I don't want to go over there because now you're an adult. You have your own house. I don't want to go over there. Your mom said, "Well, you should come." Well, I don't want to go because now you have your own vehicle. And now, you know, you, you don't have to put yourself in that stressful, uh, stressful environment because now you no longer need a ride because you're an adult. And what makes you an adult? Because you, now you have a financial structure to where you have your own vehicle. You have your own place to stay. If you don't want to go to that place, you don't have to go. And if you did go, when you got tired, you can leave when you wanted to because you have a vehicle and you have a vehicle because of finances, right? A lot of uh, people, a lot of parents don't like to teach their kids about finances or they teach kids that, you know, money is is overrated and it's not bad, you know, don't seek it and stuff like that. But then, you know, when you look at a lot of things that stress people, it boils down to finances. So when you look at finances in a whole and in general, let's, not, let's look at marriage, right? If you look at about 90 to 100 percent of marriages in America, they either boil down to two things. Every divorce, and every about 90 to 100 percent of every divorce in America boils down to two things. One of them is sex, and the other one is money. Finances and sex are the two things that pretty much every divorce is going to boil down to. Somebody's getting too much sex. Somebody's not getting enough sex. Somebody's getting sex from somewhere else. Somebody want you know. Somebody doesn't want to have sex. Somebody do want to have sex. Um, something like that with sex, right? Uh, another thing is the finances. He, she makes, she spends too much money. He doesn't make enough money. He's 
doing this with the money or she's doing that with the money or they are doing this with the money so those are top the top two things are sex and money and the premises of this video is telling you how important finances is right so if you're talking about all the marriages in the united states boils down to sex and money if you have your finances straight think about how many divorces how significantly divorce rate will probably drop right Another thing is people only respect what they fear in most cases, right? People only respect what they really fear, you know? For example, in Christianity, people, you, if you're a God-fearing man, you fear God, you respect it, right? Another thing is when people look at um, people with money, they fear people. If, if you fear what somebody can do to you financially, if you, if you think somebody has a financial control over you, you're going to fear them and respect them in a certain way. You know, people don't really respect two things in life. They respect people that can do physical harm and they respect people that can financially harm them. For example, people won't say certain things to their supervisor or their boss or in their work environment because of the financial gridlock that person has on you. If I say this, I can lose my job. I can get fired. Or if I'm a company, if I say this, if I do this, then um, I can lose this X amount of customers and customers mean money. So everything really boils down to people respect and people fear things with finances, right? So that's if look at every punishment in you know in America. If you go to jail, you have to pay a fine, or we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna you're gonna pay this fine, we're gonna pay this IRS a fine, or every punishment in America either come back down to finances or it's going to come down to uh, physical where either somebody can beat you up or somebody going to put you in a confined area. So money, uh, so it comes back down to money and also physical harm. So then again, we're also putting the most, the two top things that people are punished for or the top two things that people use as a way to punish people. One of them is finances. Again, we're showing you again how important it is, right? Now, let's talk about another stressor. When you look at people that are stressed out, you say, okay, why is this person stressed out or why that person is stressed out? You know, they're kids. You have kids, right? Let's say if your kids are going to a school. You don't feel they're getting the attention they need. You feel they're being neglected by the teachers and the whatever or whatnot. Or you feel they're being uh, unfairly targeted for whatever reason. Uh, they're not getting the uh, attention they need to help them comprehend or... Or whatever you don't feel the teachers are doing a good job right so you go up to the school you talk to the teachers and the teachers uh, they tell you all oh, we're doing what we're supposed to do you talk to the administration administration say hey we're doing what we're supposed to do or whatever but if you had the finances you can say hey you know what my child or my son or daughter is not going to the school anymore we're going to put them in another school only way you can do that because most schools are put in certain districts that means you're probably going to have to move or that means you have to enroll them into a private school if you enroll them into a private school, that means you're going to have to be able to pick them up and drop them off every day for uh, school. So most adults work, you know. So a lot of adults don't have the, uh, you know, maybe they work night shift or second shift or whatever. Or well, they may not have the capabilities to pick and drop this son or daughter off. They may not have the financial capabilities to, uh, they may not have the financial capabilities to drop their kid off. So... I mean, not, you know, the financial capability to put their child in that school, what I meant to say, because, you know, most private schools do, you have to pay for tuition, correct? So, those that situation right there boils down to, you know, a lack of a financial structure, right? If I work a job, like I just said earlier in the video, most people, we all work a job to make money, right? So, if you didn't have to go, if you, if you didn't have that obligation for money from an eight, a nine to five, you can spend more time with your kids and you can pick them up and drop them off how you feel. Some people do have jobs where they can easily drop them off and pick them up how they feel. But majority of people don't. So the second thing is now I have to pay $1,000 or whatever, $2,000, $5,000 a month for uh, tuition for my child to go to school. Most people can't afford that. So since you can't afford the private school or you don't have the means to pick and drop your kid up uh, from, the, from a different school, you have to just say, hey, well... I don't like this school, I don't think he's getting attention he needs, then, you know, I'm just going to let him stay there. Because you don't have those choices. If you, didn't, if you didn't have that financial obligation to this job, right, 
if you had this financial obligation to this job or if you didn't have if you had the means to be able to afford this tuition you would easily put your child into a better school right anybody would but since you don't have that financial structure that brings those choices to you guess what your kid is going to end up staying into that school you know let's say if you you raise your child you find out they have a speech problem or you raise your child to find out that they have um they're autistic or you find out that they have an eye problem and they can't see well or they have some type of physical deformity or physical um drawback or something like that maybe it's mental maybe it's physical right and you find out they have it and it's prohibiting them from learning more or it's you know expanding their mind let's say you find your kid needs glasses and you can't afford the glasses or you find out the the kid has a hearing problem or they have a speech problem or something like that there are all types of specialists that you can take a kid to right you can you, you can say okay you know what my child has a hard time comprehending this math I'm going to give him a mentor that's going to uh, spend, uh, spend time with them. They get a mentor, that kid is going to take off, right? You get a mentor, that kid will take off and become smart and become wise, you know, because they have, because you had the financial capabilities to be able to get a mentor for your child to help them get over that, uh, that, that drawback that they may have. But if you didn't have the financial capabilities to get them that mentor, that child would just have to live with it and learn with it. And it may go on and it may grow to be even worse later on, or it may continue to prohibit them from reaching their full potential. So that again, you know, that's another stress that some people stress about. They can stress about the quality of life that their kids have. All the stress about the quality of life that they have. They don't like the neighborhood. If you have money, you don't like the neighborhood, you go to a different neighborhood. If you have money, you don't like the meal you will serve, you buy a different one. If you don't like the way your kids are being treated, you put them in a different environment. That's if you have the financial structure that allows you to do that. All boils back down to finances. But through our life, we're taught that money is bad, it's evil, it doesn't need it. Now, does money bring on some bad things? Yes. It's like anything, you know? But any, that, that can be said for anything, right? Does money solve everything? No. Does money, can it buy happiness? No. But if I have 100% of, if I, you know, if I, if I can eliminate 90% of my problems with this, then guess what should be my number one priority? That, right? Now, finance is one of those things that it doesn't come overnight. It doesn't happen immediately. It happens over time. You know, a lot of people, we like instant gratification. We want it right now. You know, that's why a lot of people play scratch offs. That's why a lot of people play the lottery. Hey, if I guess these numbers at 6 p.m. when they announce those numbers, guess what? I can possibly become a millionaire. If I scratch this card off, maybe guess what? I can win $50,000 right here. It's instant. You know, changing your financial structure a lot of times is not instant. Majority of cases is not. It's over time. You know, you look at Walmart, man, Walmart's making uh, billions of dollars a year. But you don't know that, you know, Walmart's been around for 40, 60, 70 years. Started with Sam Walton with a corner store. A lot of people don't look at that, right? You may look at, for example, you may look at Nike. Nike currently makes about $28 billion annually, right? You look at Nike, man, these guys are making a lot of money. But you have to look at, how long Nike has been around, right? So it started somewhere on Oregon State University with just an idea of a shoe, right? So it started somewhere. So when you think of something, some people are like, you know what? I got a dream of, of having my own gun store, but that's probably gonna take me 20 years if I can get it up and running and going. So yeah, don't worry about that. I would rather focus on maybe stretch offs or Maybe I can just, maybe money will just fall out of the sky one day. And before you know it, 15, 20 years on went by. And you'll say, man, if when I was 30, if I would have started this now, I could be this now. Or when I was 25, when I thought of this, I could be this now. So, you know, you have to have that long-term vision, not just that instant gratification. So hopefully in this video, I went over and told you guys about, uh, you know, just a, a episode here talking about how I feel as though my personal opinion that how I feel as though how money can alleviate a lot of problems. So, you know, the slogan is grand advice for the common investor, right? So it's a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm approaching finance with a common sense approach. So those are real life scenarios. And I'm telling you how money 
You know, a lot of things, a lot of stressful environments that we're in is because of money. You know, if you don't want to, if you get around a group of people and they stress you out, if you have the finances, you don't have to be around that group of people. You know, you go to your job, man, I hate my coworkers. They do this, this, you know, they get on my nerves every day. Only reason why you're in that situation with those coworkers is because of finances. You need that monthly check or you need, you know, you have monthly obligations that you must meet. So that's why money is so important. That's why finances is so important. I'm not talking about the paper copy or the paper money, you know, putting money in your pocket. I'm talking about the choices and the abilities and the freedom that having your finance, having a nice financial structure gains. So it has to start somewhere. If you don't, you know, you look at, you know, if you may not ever see the uh, fruits of your labor, maybe your kids or maybe your grandkids or maybe your nieces, your nephews or your brothers or sisters or your siblings may see it, but it has to start somewhere. If you look at every wealthy family, it started somewhere. People look at Warren Buffett and you say, man, Warren Buffett is a you know, multi-billionaire, but look at look at who his dad was. Look at who his granddad was. It started with somebody. And it could you could be the one that's supposed to start it. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you got some great value out of this. Uh stay tuned for the next episode.